starts taking some of the suffering away because it starts to become humorous and then you start to realize i just cracked a joke on myself i pulled a prank <laughs> a long drawn out prank on myself did nobody do it but me because i'm the only person that know me that well mm -hmm. nobody else don't know me good enough to know that i'm gonna look here and this is what i'm gonna be looking for when i look here I'm the only one know me that good, so I must have hid it here so I can find it later. Mm, mm, mm. Right? And then this is how you picking out your sentences and your word selection that writes your book of life. Mm -hmm. You have to know yourself enough to know that the you left yourself clues. Right. You left yourself clues into the exhuming of the self. Now all you trying to remember is how to find the clues. Mm -hmm. but we lost track of that because they took them all into the secret society, the sciences of how to read the clues at birth. Right. They don't tell us about naming ceremonies and asking the baby they name over and over every day until they tell you where you can hear mm -hmm. a clear and coherent name. So we're not it normally to take nine months and the baby will say a name. That's their name. Okay. Okay. <laughs> But normally, you know, that's an old tribal tradition. You know, the old ladies sit around talking about, don't you mark that child, right? Don't talk bad about people because why you pregnant? Because you're going to mark the child to come out with that negative trait, mm -hmm. right? But if you, you can mark your child with positive traits the same way, mm -hmm. right? So the the elder women in our community they've been talking about it in our face the whole time but we didn't know what they was talking about mm -hmm. they was giving us clues because one day we're gonna get it all we're gonna have a big old bag of puzzle pieces and then we said well let me put this puzzle together and see what it looked like right, right right and that's when the humor of the universe hit you right in your solar plexus and all your pain and suffering was a harsh practical joke that you played on yourself because you was the only person that knew you well enough on how to play that practical joke on yourself while you was playing human mm -hmm. to snap you out of this <laughs> out of the slumber. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ain't that son? Ain't that some shit, bro? Wow. Mm. <laughs> the, we all the, in on our part. Look, all of the stuff we go through in our lifetime. We know it before we take on the life. Right, right. Before we come, but we forget. Yeah. Because we have to mature uh, enough to live the life as the adult. But the youth and the childhood is the training for what you're going to be an adult. And if you forego parts of your training, you're going to go back, back over it, back over it, back over it. And it's going to come in a different form until you get the lesson. Mm hmm. Everybody book a life like that. That's the backflip. Right. You ever hear somebody say, you monkey flipping? That's what right. they're talking about. You keep backflipping over the lesson till you get it. Right? But the gurus, the shamans, the swamis, the yogis, the hayokas, they all sit in a room and review the life in meditation until they see where they was learning the lesson and say oh that's the lesson i don't want to live that one no more so let me mark that off the book so i won't go through that no more mm -hmm. then you have a test gonna come up because you wrote the test and you the only one well know you well enough to write the test to determine if you ready to live your best life can't nobody write your test but you can't nobody write your book but you mm -hmm. But you can let other people get make you f abandon your book to help them finish theirs. Right. That's called selling your soul. Ooh. Ooh. You abandon yeah. your book of life to build somebody else's book of life. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have to go back and fulfill it, even if you have to reincarnate in a different life. You're gonna have to because you made that promise to yourself. Mm -hmm. And the only promise you can't never break is the one you make to yourself because you're going to find a way to always make sure you deliver. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The same as lying to yourself. Mm -hmm. You're going to always know you lying when you told that lie to yourself. So we're sitting in church trying to force ourselves to believe something that we don't believe because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. the preacher said it. Who the hell is he? <laughs>
what make what he's saying out that book more valid than what I hear in my heart? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But they tell us to forego what we hear in our heart to follow what that man told us was in that book. Mm -hmm. They told me that book was the word of God and how powerful God was. I said, then you shouldn't need to open that book to prove it's the word of God. Mm -hmm. Soon as they open it, I take them right to the part that say that anybody that testify to self testify a lie because they finna take me to the part of the book that says that this is the book of God. Mm -hmm. So if you need to use the book of God to prove to me it's the book of God, it's not the book of God, it's a lie because anything that testify of itself testify of a lie. If yeah, you right. can't show who you is in the world around you, it don't matter who you think you is on the world within. You haven't learned to express yourself yet openly. Therefore, you keep yourself in seclusion until you're ready to express yourself openly. Mm -hmm. That's called letting your light shine into the world. Everybody got something to offer. But the societies we live in forces us to forego what we have to offer to the world in order to accept what the world is trying to force upon us. That's the nature of the 3D because you have to have the opposites. Mm -hmm. You got to have the polar opposites, the twin pillars, severity and mercy, the stressor and the buffer mm -hmm. in order to learn the lessons of life. And you mm -hmm. take a roller coaster ride while you learn it. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this, Rod. Does um, we're talking about life and what we call death. Does being cremated versus hey, being. Yeah, that's better. That's way, way better. Okay. <laughs> All right, so so Rod, speaking of life and what we call death, does be let's talk about cremation and being buried. Does that impact um where you go? If we're talking about the afterlife, we're talking about different realms, does that impact where you go or how long it takes you to get somewhere once you leave this realm? Does it imp have an impact on the afterlife? No. So it doesn't matter, like you you would recommend is it you like so and me, I tell people like this, I don't give a damn what you do with me when I'm dead. Mm. You put me in a box and drop me in the dirt. You put me on here and let the vultures eat me. Either way, I wouldn't give a damn because I ain't in there to, to experience it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. But the reason I say that is when you leave the body and you, you're going to get another meat suit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It might be five years in the future. It might be 5,000 years in the future. Mm -hmm. But you're going to get another meat suit if you choose to come back to Earth. Right. Look, while we here, we kicking and screaming. We ain't never coming back to do this shit again. Mm -hmm. Until the next time we come back. When you are eternal being to live 50, 60, 120 years on Earth. It's like it's like having recess in, in elementary school. You can't wait for the bell to ring. Damn. You get to come into the and experience stuff that's not part of the spirit realm. Yeah. The physical world is unique in that way. And it was created for that purpose because it was another expression of higher consciousness finding ways for spirit to have something to do for eternity. <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> we don't just want to be a beam of light forever. Right. Just float through the infinite darkness as a beam of light and yeah. never stop. No, sometimes we want to make a pit stop. Right. Right? We might want to go to the rest stop, grab a bag of chips. But when you a beam of light flying through darkness, you can't do none of that. Mm. You can't complain about nothing. You don't got nothing to complain about. Everything is just in a state of perfection in the spirit realm. So you need something that's imperfect in order to accelerate or enhance or uh, accentuate your experience. Mm. So you come into the physical world blind, deaf, and dumb mm -hmm. to determine if you can awaken in the slumber to your true self. We all know we're going to wake up to our true self at some point. And most of the time in our book of life, the point we wake up is 30 minutes after we so-called die. Because mm. that's when we get to go over all of the joys and the pains. Because ain't no joy and pain in the spirit realm. It's all information. It's just information. It's information. 
It's just light. But Rod, Rod, isn't that kind of robotic? You, you, it almost the way you describe the spirit world. It almost seems kind of robotic. Robots don't have emotions. They don't experience joy, happiness, sadness. The spirit realm almost sound robotic, Rod. Because robots is designed off the beings in the spirit realm. Mm. <laughs> they not mm. designed after humans. Mm. They designed after the th the beings in the spirit realm. They data on Star Trek. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, and they trying to figure out the dichotomy between Kurt and Spock. Right. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> The, the robot, look, artificial intelligence can only go to the uh, fourth dimension and then it breaks down. Mm. That's why I, I'm not, I, I would never be fearful of artificial intelligence ever becoming to a point where it can take over humanity. That ain't it happening. can never outthink the God mind. Mm. The, the God mind has got, got, got 21 dimensional um um, it pings the thought pings. Woo. It's an encryption code. The artificial intelligence only got a four bit quantum encryption. The human intelligence is a 21 bit quantum encryption over 19 dimensions. So mm -hmm. they can it, it can never become as wise as the gods when they come into the flesh. He will always out think artificial intelligence. Mm. All you got to do is cause it to jam, an information overload. If you draw it from the fifth dimension, you can easily give a, a artificial um, sensory overload to somebody in the fourth dimension because when they come into the third, they're going to say they had a nightmare. Mm. That's an information overload. Mm -hmm. It comes out as you see in the entropy. All of that dark, evil stuff, that's entropy. Right? And all of that beautiful, gorgeous stuff. That's the harmony of unison, the oneness, right? That's efficiency, 100% pure efficiency. <laughs> it's, this is, it's funny to me because everything I'm saying, everybody notice when they're not in a physical form, but in the physical form, it sounds like I'm talking crazy as hell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. For real, for real, for real. Damn. <clears throat> That's like saying if you keep training dogs, one day they're gonna we're gonna wake up and they're gonna be walking us on the leash. <laughs> mm. 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 <laughs> Listen, the dog Man, is I the dog is the dog needs certain qualities that's not part of his genome mm -hmm. to give him the capability to conquer the human. It's not in his genetic makeup and his genetic code. He might be able to um, attack one of us and eat us up, but he's not finna outthink us. Especially when we know the nature of the canine. Once you know the case, when the human know the nature of something, that thing can't conquer the human no more. Mm. But soon as something is mysterious in nature, it creates uh, that cognitive dissonance, that moment of confusion, and that's when the serpent strike. Right. But as soon as you become aware of what you're dealing with, man, that shit don't work on you no more. Mm. That stuff don't work on you no more. That's why I had to tell you who put the conjure in play, what the conjure did, how it worked, where it's at, who done it? Because when more of us recognize this, oh, it don't work on us no more. We woke now. <laughs> you put me to sleep with a blood ritual on, on a constitutional mandate with one of the chief's blood because the blood of the righteous not be spilled in blood. It don't work on me no more. Mm. That spell is in, at that point broke. Right. In, any spell that's on something only works because they don't understand what it is and the mechanics of it. Your mm -hmm. spirit body will automatically protect you when you learn the nature of the spell. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. part of the free will universe rule. But as long as you in ignorance and you are doing nothing to change your ignorance level, then you allow it to stay in bondage until you decide to wake up. Mm -hmm. Right? Because when you're not in the mental state to lead yourself, you need a shepherd to lead the sheep. Mm -hmm. 
Otherwise, you got the blind leading the blind straight into a ditch. Mm. Mm. Damn, bro. <laughs> this, this, some, this some deep stuff, man. This Look, deep it, it's not deep, though. It's real simple. It's so, it's so, it's, it seemed deep because it's so basic. Mm -hmm. It's basic understanding from the higher realms that we turn off on purpose because we don't want to offend the rest of the people who ain't woke up yet. Because we tiptoeing through grandma's house because we got the uncles and aunties in these different rooms sleep. And if we wake one of them up, they're going to come out yelling and that's going to wake the rest of them up. Now, everybody yelling at all the kids. Mm. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to wake nobody up. So when we start to wake up, we start to isolate. Mm. We don't wake nobody else up too soon. And the system design is that, wait a minute. Ain't nobody tell you to wake up before everybody else. And it punishes you. Remember Dick Gregory saying, you know what's dangerous is when the universe pick you. Mm. But when the universe pick you, you put these glasses on, you can't take them off. <laughs> huh? What I say? Huh? 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 What I say? Huh? Hear me? Yeah. Hear me? Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm about to dig something else. <laughs> oh, he, oh, he was something else. Oh, I mean, he was, he was something else, man. Oh, man. Shout out to uh, Dick Gregory, man. Bless his soul. Um, yeah, let's get to um, let's get to some Q and A from the family. We're gonna do a brief. We at the fifty minute mark. We're gonna do a quick Q and A. Uh, give me some questions. Wow, this is powerful, right, y'all? Um, damn, I had what I had Q Reeves on, then I had Blue Pill, then yeah, it's been the last three days been fire, y'all. Oh man, these brothers been going in the last three, cut three, three, four days. Um, hey, I finally got to uh link up with Dane Calloway and on Legendary Top Cat on the Three Chief Combo, right? Right, man, so the people ate that up, but we had such a, a smooth conversation. Uh -huh. Right. Because we are, you know, we, we don't have a um, fundamental difference to separate us mm -hmm. because we all know what's going on on a different level for regular people. Our conversation is more of where your blind spot at. Oh, I see. This is where your blind spot. Let me see yours. OK, okay that's your blind. So we we enhancing each other's perception. Mm -hmm. This is the purpose of steel, sharp and steel. When two men come together, it's like steel, sharp and steel. Mm -hmm. But man, we've been on rock. Look, between what you've been doing, young elder been doing, and I've been doing independent, man, we've been on fire. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we've been on fire. Super For real. Fun. We've been on fire. The people is starting to see all of the stuff that we've been saying over the last couple of years since me and you first met. You've mm -hmm. been doing this half your life. <laughs> no facts, facts. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? At least, yeah. and then you, you the, people don't know, brother Rich. When you was over there with Sarnetta, you sat with some head banging heavy hitters. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And oh, they yeah. was from both sides of the fence, mm -hmm. right? They come from different backgrounds, different schools of thought. They all swear they right with somebody else reference. Indeed. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna argue this man point until you submit. <laughs> <laughs> man, man, oh man, wow. But you done been with some big wigs, so you was being trained according to your book of life by mm -hmm. being exposed to the people based on your character mm -hmm. that would allow you to see your vision for yourself and your family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody could call Rich at the wrong time and you ask his phone and say, yeah, brother, I look like to talk to you, but it's family time right now. I'm going to have to catch you later. <laughs> yeah. And nobody, they're not going to never get offended mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because of who you are and the way you do your business and the way you tend to your family. We understand what you're doing. So when you say that, it's like, okay, bro, how do you, when you can? Yeah, no facts. Right, because yeah. you got your structure. Yeah. And then you got to sit around people and watch other people do it while you was growing up. You probably was still in high school watching that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Most of us don't have that luxury, brother. Mm. Most of us don't have that luxury to sit around the tight. I mean, some of the people that came through Sarnetta when, since you was there, man. Man, amazing but, people. I mean, like, 
like James Smalls. That's that one by itself right there. Yeah. Um, the professor, uh, the, the one Tupac called right before he died. Uh, that was James Small, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, I'm thinking about another one. Um, that was Professor Cabo. Or yeah, him too. But all them guys was there. Brother Valentine was there. Del you Delbert got to Blair. see them in the early days. Delbert Blair. You got Del to see these people. Yo, yo, Rod, Delbert Blair, I'm going to tell you, if you ever met him in person, he had a unique energy to him. He, Out of everybody I've met, he felt like an extraterrestrial. He, you know what he felt like? He felt like a beam of light. You know how you go around certain people and they, you know, they, it's, it's a person. Blair felt, Blair's energy, that dude felt like a beam of light, bro. Like he Listen. was light. Do his life, I didn't bro. know nothing about who Delbert Blair was when I was about 12 years old. We were staying in this, we was visiting my auntie in Chicago. Um, it was 75th of Roth Exchange somewhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, my sister's boyfriend at the time used to always go listen to his lectures. Mm. And one day he brought him home with him. And this was like 80, maybe 81. Mm. And I couldn't stop looking at this dude. And I didn't I didn't know why. I was like, I just can't I can't take my eyes off him. It was like he was polarizing to me. But it, remember, I don't know nothing about nothing at this time. Mm. I don't even know who Farrakhan is yet. Mm. Right, but I'm looking at this dude. I'm like, this dude ain't regular. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the only thing I could do is is just compare him to me. I'm like, he he kind of not regular. Like I'm not regular. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So I went to talk to my mom. I said, who was that man? And um, she said, I can't tell you who he was, but just know he was somebody that you needed to see at the time. Mm -hmm. That. And then I didn't find out who he was to years, years later. Mm. Yeah. I caught him when I first started. Um, okay, so it's a brother that I was locked up with named Hart Eel. Mm -hmm. Hart Eel had all of the heavy hitters cassettes. And I used to go through them. And one of them was, I think, was uh, um, Dr. Delbert Blair. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm going to find this dude when yeah. I get home here in Chicago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. But I didn't get to go to Chicago when I got home because I ended up having to take care of my mama because the day after I came home, she virtually died. Mm. Sorry to hear that. Right. So she stayed in the coma for like six days. And then, you know, she come out the coma. So I ended up not going to Chicago. So I started researching, looking for him in the internet back then and I finally found some videos of them but they wasn't YouTube videos they was on somebody's website and I was watching I'm like man this dude right here <laughs> mm. yeah and then I just I was just on Delbert Blair for a while <laughs> yeah yeah man that was uh yeah shit like I said Blair a lot of them man Bobby Hemet uh they was just they was uh Richard King uh they was just on the next level man but uh Let's get Man, to some. Uh, what you, you say, Rod? I love to have met Dr. Richard King. Yeah, I never, I never got to meet him. I never got to meet him. I would have loved that, to have met him. That him. black dot science. A lot of people don't know that's black root science. Black dot science, melanin science, the mm -hmm. science of the nine ether. When you go through Dr. Uh, Carol Byrne, Dr. Rich King, mm -hmm. then you go get uh, Afro Unu. Then you go to Jamaica for the Holy Pibby and the Sacred Parchment Scroll of Black Supremacy. And you start seeing that they talk different languages, but it's a key thread to all of this information. This is what they call African root science. It's called a piece of work. Indeed. But Indeed. If, if you want to show some love to the brother Rod, I know you're always asking about the brother's cash app. I know a lot of y'all remember it, but I got to put it on the screen regardless. Um, Dollar sign sick, yeah, S I K A P E, dollar sign sick ape. Uh, you want to show love and support to the brother for uh providing us. Uh, the brother's been rocking with me for about two or three years now, and it's just every single show has been action packed, electrifying, filled with information from start to the end of it. So, uh, make sure you'll show love to the brother Rod Hayes on the cash app, dollar sign 
Sick Ape. That's S I K A P E. Uh, with that being, yeah, galactic event. Somebody, yeah, yeah. The, the gathering of the masses is a galactic event. That's yeah. That's what it is. It's a galactic event. That's what it is. But uh, let me put this on the screen one time. Let's get to some questions. Um. Uh, okay, Rod. Is it okay to to have to cut off my parents due to my own growth? Like they're addicts stuck in abusive relationships, they lack accountability and respect, Rod. <coughs> Cut off mama. Cut off big mama, Rod. That's a that's a hard one. It oh. is. But remember, birds push they 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 chicks out the nest so they know they can fly. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the behavior of the parents mean go get yourself together. I'll be right back. Go get yourself together and then come back and deal with us later if you have the love for them. But some people abuse be so um, so obscene that we never recover from it to have a functional relationship with those family members. But remember, you relatives by blood, you family by that bond of affection that keeps y'all tied together through thick and thin. You can't be going through the thick and thin with somebody going to leave you every time it get thick. You're going to be the be with me or you're not going to be with me. And sometimes you have to stand on your own two feet in order to control your circle when you become an adult. Your parents got you to adulthood. Their job was done. Now your parents and your association with them supposed to be a luxury for you and for them to see you living your best life in this realm for them to be part of seeing you live your best life. That's supposed to be a blessing to see, but some people burn those bridges. If you can't make it work, you got to do what you got to do, but you can't force around a peg in the square hole. It just don't fit. All right. All right. Um, Let's get to the next question. Peace, family. Since there is no original thought and money is nothing but a collective agreement, is it a violation of spiritual law to monetize universal knowledge? Um, the, the way that the old priesthoods used to work is they never charged what people gave out of gratitude. Mm. Right? This is why I don't charge, but I accept donations. Because the gratitude keeps the energy cycling, right? But you got a lot of people out here charging to do spiritual work because the church has got us used to every time somebody do spiritual work, they have to charge. But you're not supposed to have to charge because if what you offer in the re revelations of the universal knowledge to other people, they gratitude will compel them to compensate you on their own without you trying to solicit them for funds. Then when the system change over, all them people that have been scamming, they money ain't going to be no good anyway. Money as we know it, do you think it's going to be around um, 150 years from now and 20, 40, 30, 40 years from now, Rod? All the money is, is the way for, if you do something for me, uh -huh. um, I have to give you something tangible to compensate you for your time and your efforts to assist me in my need, mm -hmm. which is a form of gratitude. But it's a way to keep it, uh, keep the communication balance. Mm -hmm. Because some people don't got no skills, but they got a whole lot of currency sitting around. Right, right. So they got to pay the plumber, the electrician. They got to pay the guy to come cut the grass. They got to pay the mechanic to change the tire. All of the stuff that they would be able to do on their own, they have to use currency to get done because they don't know how to do nothing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is what the society is gearing, cutting us off from what we used to call Uberman or the Superman or the man that was the universal man. Remember that Leonardo da Vinci uh, drawing with the man on the circle with the three arm um, positions? Yeah. yeah. It's called the universal man. That symbol was symbolizing the man that knew how to do many different things with his hands. 
Mm. Right. And they each hand from the position is uh um it's the code to the work that he did. Right. So he only got two feet when he stood two t the the, the, the Vitruvian man. Uh, it's also called the universal man. But this is what the uh symbol is the representation of the energy of the man who can do more than one or two things. Right? To a jack of all trades, the master of none. But the uh the jack of all trades is better than the master of one. Right? So if you only know how to do one thing, you limit your your value. Mm -hmm. The more stuff you can do, the more value you create within your in your circle, right? Mm -hmm. So we are, everybody know which uncle to call to fix the car, which cousin to call to cut your hair. We, we all know that, but we don't know that one person used to do all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One person used to be able to be the barber, the dentist, the 